Hey, Joe Gilder here. Welcome to part four in this series on how to switch to Studio One. Today, we're talking about mastering. If you haven't seen the other videos, we talked about my overview of Studio One, some tips for getting started, uh, how to use Studio One for editing, mixing, and now we're talking about mastering. Specifically, let me show you a roundabout way we're going to get there. Because obviously, you could, if you're just mastering, someone sends you files to master, you would just open up a new, it's called a project file in Studio One, which is our mastering page, just the project page. Uh, but if you're going from mixing to mastering, which a lot of people, myself included, do, here's one way to do it. So I've got this mix. Let's say this mix is sounding amazing. And I'm going to throw just, I'm going to throw a limiter on here just because I have not listened to this. We literally imported these tracks in the last session. And um, I just want to make sure it doesn't clip. But uh, inside the song page, which is where we do our recording and our mixing, if you come up to this menu where it says, whoop, let's zoom out a little bit, where it says song, this is where you can go to export your mix down, which is just your basic, here I want to export this mix as a wave or MP3. Here you can export stems or multi-tracks, but there's also this add to project section. What's neat about this is it shows me a list of recent projects to which I could add this song, but I'm going to create a new project. Whoops. So what what is happening right here? So the... The page that we use for mixing is one song per song page, right? So I've got a song here, another song. And we want to be able to add all of these songs to a mastering page, which will have all of our mixes. So assuming we're doing an EP or an album, we want to mix it, and then we want to send that mix to the mastering page. In the, in the old days or in other systems, you would have to export your mix down put it into a folder, keep track of it, right? File management and all that nonsense. Then you'd have to take that WAV file that you exported and then import it into your mastering session, either in another piece of software, because a lot of pieces of software, a lot of DAWs don't really do mastering, right? You export from Pro Tools and then you import into WaveLab for mastering. Or you do mastering inside of Pro Tools, but it's it's not really a mastering suite. doesn't have all the tools that you would need. So anyway... Um, this allows us to send it from the song to the mastering page without ever having to actually deal with the file itself. It does it all internally. So let's say we're creating this project. And we're going to call this My New EP. We're going to send this first song to it. We can say where we want to save it, and we say, boink, OK. Here's what it does. It creates a new project, which is this, and then it says we're going to update the mastering files. And we say, OK. So it goes back to the song, and it's going to render a mix down of this song based on where our start and end markers are in the song. And once it does that, it's going to close the song, save the song, close the song, and then present it to us in the project page, which we can see here. It says, OK, done. All right, so we've added that song. We could repeat this process for all the different songs in our EP. And you may think, OK, other than the fact that I don't have to like export to a folder and then drag it into the mastering page, what's the benefit of this? I'll tell you. Let's close this project. And let's go back to our song. And let's say we come into the song. We had already added it to the project last week. We come in this week and we say, you know what? I'm going to make a bunch of changes to this song. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to delete a bunch of these plugins because they sound terrible. So we come in, we drag them. We actually let's select all these. Let's hit this. Let's scroll down and say remove all. And we say, you know what? And we're going to adjust all these faders too. We make a bunch of changes to the mix and we close it. And we say, I'm feeling so much better about this. Then... We can come back in and we can open up this project, this mastering page that we created. So I click on that. It opens it up and check it out. It says, update mastering files. What it's telling me is this song, and it can be a whole list of songs, any songs in this project, has been updated since the last time you were here. Would you like to update the file? In other words, would you like me to update this stereo mix down that's in this mastering session? I say yes and check out what happens. It opens the song and it renders a current version of this mix down and plops it in the place of the previous one. So guess what I don't have to do ever again? I don't have to keep track of mix one, mix two, mix three. This was on this date. None of that matters because when I open my mastering session, it will automatically update all the songs to the latest version of the mix. So if I'm working on a mix and I've gone through and done a round of first round of mixes, mix ones for the client, I can add them to the project. I can export all of them at one time from this project page using this uh, digital release button. So I can export them as WAV files, MP3s, both, or all of the above. 
I can add a limiter here, let's say, across everything. Right, so I can kind of do my mastering there or even just light mastering here because I'm just sending them mixes for approval. Then when they come back and say, cool, we've got notes on all 10 songs. We want you to turn the bass up on all 10. I open up each song, I turn the bass up, I close them all, save them all, and then when I open this mastering project again, it opens each song for me one at a time and renders a new mix down. Isn't that glorious? It's like having an assistant even though you don't have an assistant. You would ha imagine how much time that would take. It doesn't take any time at all. I just once I've made all the changes, I don't even have to export anything. I just open the project, go make a sandwich, and by the time I come back, it's open to each song and blopped them into place. All right, so that's the internal workings between song and project page. We don't talk about that enough. It is so good, and you've got to experience it to realize it because you're no longer having to manage these files the way you used to. Now, within the song page, you can you can bring songs in from or within the project page, you can bring songs in. Uh, like I mentioned, or you can just bring in like audio files as well. So let me go in and pull in, like if you want to do traditional mastering, I can bring in this song and just drag it in, right? That also works. And what's cool about this is we can now, with our songs here, we can measure loudness. So we click this button and it measures the actual loudness of the audio file there. So we know where we're starting from. So we can see that this song is already coming in, almost clipping at minus 12 luffs. That's pretty loud for a mix. It should probably be closer to like minus 20, so we have some room to work. Um, but that's information that we can now know and use it to apply to our songs. And then we do all our mastering stuff, and we can say update loudness. And what it does is it's measuring the loudness again, both before and after all my plugin processing. So I can see this song, the raw mix was coming in at um, minus 12 LUFS. But then the post, after all my processing, I've gotten it to minus, over minus nine. It is screaming loud at this point. It's even technically peaking over here because we are making that limiter work hard. And we can do that on a per song basis. So down here, this section is for stuff we want across all songs. This is kind of like the master fader section. And then we have this section where we put plugins on a per song basis. Each song has its own fader if you want to adjust overall levels that way, or you can use any number of plugins to do that. Now, when we get into the actual mastering session itself, we have a lot of tools just baked in. So I, if you have your favorite metering plugins that you want to use, by all means use them, but there's actually some really helpful ones baked in. So for example, I like to use the K14 meter when I'm mastering, so I can switch to that, and then I really like this FFT um, spectrum meter. And then I like to set it up with uh, with the uh, hold set to infinite. So now I can kind of see sort of what are the, the, the peaks throughout as it plays. Um, or maybe I set up it to be kind of medium so it slowly goes down over time. Uh, but we can change out any of these for whatever tickles our fancy. You can even look at that. Isn't that beautiful? This one actually is nice as well. So you can choose which ones you like. And now you've got this big, beautiful meter. So you can see what's happening across the, the frequencies, what's happening volume-wise here. You even have this over here that shows you the current measurement of Luff's value in the moment, whereas this number over here shows you the overall average for the entire song. That's interesting and helpful. And then you've even got a correlation meter and a spectrum meter over here on the right. So you can see what's happening in the stereo field. And if this ever goes negative, you know you potentially have a phase problem Something left to right is going out of phase. A little bit occasionally isn't a big deal. If it's way over here, you probably did something naughty in your mix that you need to fix. And then, of course, you can add in your plugins and mix or master to your heart's content. A couple of things to note as well. We do have the ability to do clip gain inside of the mastering session. So if you right-click on a piece of audio, you can toggle on clip gain, or it's called the, sorry, the gain envelope here. And now we have what looks like an automation lane. So we can come in and we can make adjustments in volume to specific sections. So historically, instead of having to just master everything through the same processing, we can, someone came in and they really should have turned up the last chorus or turned down the last chorus, for example. We can do that here, and that's affecting the signal as it goes through our plug-in chain that we have available to us. As far as plugins go, we have all of the plugins you could want. We've got a limiter. We've got a uh, multi-band. We can actually do the same thing we do during mixing. We can have our plugins open over here. We've got a five-band multi-band compressor. 
I set mine default to three because I like a three band for mastering, but you can have up to five. That's included. We've got limiters, EQs. The EQ that we use in Studio One, by the way, Pro EQ, is no slouch. It is a fantastic sounding EQ. It has dynamic EQ built in, so we can do we can do things like this, where certain frequencies are being triggered and turning down based on the content there. That's dynamic EQ. Also has a linear phase low cut with a couple of set specific frequencies, and you can change it to soft or not. Um, and then also it still has a low cut and a high cut and everything else you might need. It's a great sounding and great a useful EQ. Lots more stuff here, but obviously you can use your favorite third-party plugins as well. Um, obviously, Studio One will work with those as well. When you're done and you want to export, it's really simple. You have a bunch of options up here, but the one I always use is this one for digital release. This is what allows me to export the songs, either all the songs or only some of the songs, in any format that I might want. So obviously, WAV file and MP3 are what I use. I can select both of these, and it'll export them all, do a batch process. But you can also export things like FLAG, AUG Vorbis, all that craziness. Um, there's also the ability to adjust target loudness. If you want to say, I'd love for after you export it, just make sure everything's coming in at minus 12 LUFs. And you can set presets based on what streaming service you're trying to target, like... Uh, I think that's the Spotify. I forget I forget which algorithms or what. Um, and you can set it to album mode, which will make the entire album average that, versus this mode makes it be the individual tracks. It's there. It's not going to do any limiting. It's just if everything's a little louder than the proper channels, they're, those systems are going to turn it down anyway. This allows you to turn it down as well. Uh, and you can even publish this directly to SoundCloud, to your Studio One Pro Plus account, or even to TuneCore directly from here, which is pretty nifty. And there's a few other options there as well. You can also export DDP files, which are helpful for printing CDs. You can make an image of this album. You can even, if your computer can do it, you can actually burn an audio CD from it. And if you need to run the update mastering files thing that I showed you at the beginning, it will do that by default when you open the project. But if in the middle of the project you need to run that again, you just click that button and it'll tell you if they are up to date. No, they're already up to date. You don't have to worry about it and you're good to go. So that is the mastering suite inside of Studio One. A lot of the stuff that you can do in the mixing window as far as processing applies here in mastering as well. Um, but you just have a better environment for doing that. And you can even do things like adjust the gaps between songs. If you want it to have a nice two second gap or you want there to be overlap between songs, all of that you can do here as well, which is pretty fancy. Oh, hang on, I messed it up. There we go. Um, yeah, so a great tool to have and it's just a part of Studio One. So if you have not checked out the project page and you do some mastering or you just want to gather all the songs you're currently working on in one place where you can sit and listen to them all, and export them all at once, it's super handy for that. When I'm producing a project and we get done with a tracking day, at the end of every song, before I close the session, I'll add it to a project. Just real quickly, it'll do a quick render. Then at the end of the day, when the drummer's packing up his kit and the bass player's putting his amp away, I can open the project for that day, slap a limiter across everything to get it nice and loud, and then export into a folder and share that folder with them so they can listen to it on the drive home. It's super simple. I don't have to do that times five or ten songs. I just have to, throughout the day, add them to the project. Then I can just export everything at once from here. I've done that on a number of occasions and people said, hold on, you already have this ready for me? And I say, yeah, bro, I'm a professional. All right, that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you.